What's happening there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon to everyone out there. It's the Earthmaster here on this finally a Monday, May 22nd, 2023. All jokes aside there, uh, it's a beautiful Monday out here in California. It's supposed to be about 95 degrees, a little warm, but uh, either way, weather's uh, fairly nice for the most part. Uh, it is about 11.50 a.m. here, West Coast time in the state of California. The latest quake shows a 1.5 down here into the Southern California area, uh, just on the San Jacinto Fault Zone. As uh, far as activity overnight goes, uh, we were watching some movement out here around the Nevada and the California border. Also, uh, did have some activity yesterday, right? Ramping up here across the, um, well, the Gorda Plate. Looks as though that has... Well, it's still up there. Just past the 24-hour map. Uh, originally a 5.6 coming in here. Looks like it was downgraded to a 5.5. Still uh, with on this plate within this plate boundary here just offshore. Really haven't seen too much aftershock sequences following this activity yesterday. Uh, looks like just a 2.9 um, following that quake. Nothing overnight, though, so far. All right, uh, Greenville area, Lake Almanor region, still seeing a little bit of aftershock, or, uh, yeah, I somewhat consider this aftershock activity with the amount of quakes here uh, in this area over the last week or so. <clears throat> Got about 120 earthquakes around the Lake Almanor area. Most of that within the last 10 days following uh, that earthquake that kind of shook up there around the Lake Almanor region. It was a 5.5. Um, so yeah, things definitely uh, kind of kicking up there. Uh, tapering off slightly into today, where we did see, uh, looks like after midnight, a 2.3 and a 2.3 here, two of them. A little bit further down south here, away from the area that we've seen the, the main shakes. So I'm not for sure what's going on specifically here, but it is kind of taking a trend to the south, uh, away from the Lake Almanor area. Pacific Northwest, not a whole lot going on up here. A little bit of movement across Mount Rainier. Some very small microquake activity um, into the Bay Area of California on the Calaveras Fault Zone. Got a couple smaller quakes there in the microquake department. And up into Yellowstone. Looks like they added a couple quakes there from yesterday and today. Uh, largest looks to be a 2.3 early this morning. So let's see what's going on here for Yellowstone. 2.3, 6 o'clock this morning. I'm seeing it already. It's going to be this quake right here. Uh, a couple other smaller aftershocks here, it looks like, or at least some very small microquake movement uh, prior to and after this 2.3. Nothing major going on, no major swarm uh, currently taking place there at Yellowstone. Just a little seismic activity. Across Texas here, looks like these guys are... Um, kicking up a little bit today near Smiley, Texas of 3.1. Um, I pretty much assume what's out here. Um, a lot of oil fields. <laughs> oil fields galore. Look at that. Let's look at the satellite view here real quick. Goodness. There is a lot of them. And this is where that 3.1 struck out here. Those are not houses or farmhouses or little camping sites out there. These are wastewater disposal ponds. And looks like this earthquake struck really close uh, to one here that has some pumps on it. And it looks like little wastewater ponds as well nearby. But if you zoom out, obviously we know what's out there. All right, the rest of the country, some movement across Oklahoma and also up against the New Madrid seismic zone. Nothing big, definitely nothing big. Uh, 1.8 from yesterday up here into the Arkansas region, the eastern portion of the country, quiet. Across the Puerto Rico area, getting a little bit of movement up here on the Puerto Rico Trench. Looks like a couple fours kicking off here uh, just p prior to that uh, trench region. Middle America Trench here looks uh, somewhat quiet. A couple threes up and down the board here. South America did see some elevated activity overnight, including some deeper movement quakes here underneath Bolivia. Whoa, 4.8 613 kilometers deep here underneath this region uh, so definitely watch this area along the plate boundary for some subsequent uh, possibly larger activity uh, looks like we are seeing a little bit of that already show up here on the earthquake 3d globe and the white circles indicating a more recent earthquake compared to the deeper uh, darker colored line there 
Uh, so watch this area though today. Definitely showing some elevated movement. Uh, down here in New Zealand and the Kermadec Trench, it looks like a 4.5 coming in. I don't know why the USGS never covers this area. They, they always leave this area out and I'm not for sure why. It's a pretty important area in terms of plate tectonics, dynamics, and of course a large population down here in New Zealand. Uh, EMSC is showing that 4.5 though into the Kermadec Trench. Uh, some scattered activity up north, getting a little cluster of movement here across the New Guinea area once again. Although, looking at that, kind of looks like it's a lot of older movement. Let me see what we got going on here. Hawaii, oh, Hawaii's taking up the um, taking up the list here. We'll get to that in just a second. Let me see what we got here for newer activity. Well, it's a little bit of here and a little bit of there across this area of Solomon Islands and New Guinea. Uh, I believe some of this activity here is, well, that's from today, 6 o'clock in the morning, 5.1. Uh, that's from last night, Solomon Islands here from today. So, yeah, a little bit of newer and older earthquake activity here across the region on a broad scale, I would say, up and down the board. Uh, across the Tokyo area, latest one of 4.9 to south of Tokyo. We did see a very deep earthquake here yesterday into a portion of the East China Sea. That allowing for some strain to build up here along this plate boundary uh, a little bit further upstream. Kuril Kamchaka Trench. Ooh, look at this one. Coming in within the last hour, 4.3. That is 190... Wait, no, no, no. 497 kilometers deep. That is a deep one there. Definitely need to watch this area. It's been, I think if anything, we've been noticing more deeper earthquake activity rather than subsequent shallower earthquake activity. Uh, but this is kind of where all the strain builds up, up along the Kuril Kamchaka Trench uh, down there a little ways, but not quite that deep. So definitely watch this area. This has been on my list for quite a while for a mega potential. Uh, up into the Alaska region, mostly smaller microquakes, quick glance at the 2.5 and above. Well, looks like we did have one yesterday, 4.4, way out here along the Aleutian Trench at 101 kilometers deep uh, yesterday. The Big Island definitely uh, showing uh, quite a bit of activity here within the last hour, getting a little separate swarm away from the crater area. This is normally a good indication here of some magma movement but this is well below the surface looks like about two to three even maybe four kilometers deep uh, but something definitely uh, on the loose down below this area we'll definitely continue to watch that uh, the hazard notification system here from the USGS on in regards to the Kilauea volcano uh, shows that it is currently still not erupting and no active lava uh, no, signific no significant changes have been observed either uh, along the either of the rift zones. Still seeing uh, looks like a tilt meter at a flat trend. No net change in tilt. Still chatting about a little bit of earthquake activity here. Um, so yeah, this can uh, obviously change in the blink of an eye. Uh, we've seen that before in the past, but we'll continue to watch this new swarm area. That's uh, definitely away from where we've been watching uh, swarming here uh, in the past couple months or so. So we'll keep an eye on the Kilauea Volcano area. Uh, down in New Zealand, I'm not seeing anything showing up here, but we will give a quick glance. Uh, because I am waiting for some uh, activity to kick up and stir up down here. Just a matter of time. Uh, following all the adjustment, there's a 4.5 along the Kermadec Trench north here of uh, the North Island region. Aside from that, it uh, looks like some smaller microquakes. Uh, shows a 4.8 also here along the Kermadec Trench L about three hours ago. Let me see here. Uh, and most of the time, that would show up. Uh, I guess the closest station here would maybe be uh, one of these in order to pick it up. Three hours ago uh, would probably be this one, but that doesn't quite look like a 4.8. Uh, that's actually a rather small signal on the graph, so 
Uh, I'm not really seeing that earthquake showing up there. A little bit of activity from last night sparking off here, but uh, as far as this morning goes, it looks fairly quiet for now. Knock on wood, we won't uh, get anything major going on, but I do expect some adjustment to take place here uh, in the New Zealand area, and that just all has to do with what's been going on here um, across the last week or so. A lot of movement, large-scale activity up here in the north. Uh, eventually, all this plate boundary has to catch up um, with the dynamics and the general flow of the momentum. We did have some activity south of New Zealand here along the um, in the South Pacific Ocean area, uh, and of course, there's always been some you know smaller quakes there across New Zealand. But I'm kind of chatting about stuff that's above five. Uh, looks like we only had one earthquake, a 4.2 in the Greymouth, New Zealand area. Uh, that was a few days ago there, about a week or so ago on the plate boundary. All right, uh, let's see what else we have here further across the region. Definitely uh, seen some movement from eastern Afghanistan ac across Iran over to the Turkey area with the latest quake here in Iran, 4.5, 10 kilometers deep. Atlantic Ocean looks fairly quiet, uh, according to the USGS. And uh, the EMSC model looks about the same as well. No major earthquakes there across the uh, Atlantic Ocean. But that's still quite a bit of broad-scale earthquake activity ramping up here um, over the last 24 hours. All right, uh, let's see what we got for space weather activity. Still looking at 30% chance for an X flare, 75% uh, chance for an M flare, 99% certainty for C flare activity overnight. We did see a little low grade M flare activity kick up here, about an M 1.9 or so. And um, conditions here across the auroras are calming down slightly it looks like we will remain somewhat unsettled over the next couple nights with some periods of uh, enhanced activity on the three day looking at the sunspots here 3311 uh, and its friends here the neighbors looking uh, fairly impressive I still think 3311 here centered within the sunspot area of this group uh, does harbor some potential for some strong flaring Notice the dynamic setup here of many different cores in that magnetic structure that it harbors. Uh, but that's about the only region to watch. This one here may be uh, getting a little bit of growth on it as well. Uh, but the main one, 3311, uh, is the uh, top dog, so to speak, in terms of the sunspot potential uh, and flaring. Right now in the UV flaring uh, image, uh, doesn't look like it's too much here across this area. A little bit of flaring down here on the one of those southern sunspots. That's going to be, uh, looks like 3310. See what we got. There is a little bit of potential here with that, uh, these two little areas, but I don't think we're going to see anything major popping off there. Uh, I think if anything, it'll be from 3311. All right, uh, so that's it today, folks. Um, We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later tonight. The weather forecast here looks like a slight chance for tornadoes out there in western, well, the Panhandle, of Texas area, in Oklahoma, 2% chance across the Plainview, Texas, up to uh, Liberal Kansas area as well, included in that. Wind and hail events look to be about 15% chance in some of those locations. So not a major severe weather threat, but uh, if you get underneath one of those thunderstorms, could see some large hail today. Uh, and again, very slight chance for a tornado probability at 2%. Thunderstorm forecast throughout the day. Pretty active here across a good portion of the western states, excluding my area here in California. Uh, but still, definitely uh, quite, a bunch, uh, quite a bit of needed rainfall falling up here along areas that uh, have seen drought conditions. So this is much appreciated, I'm sure, by the farmers and the folks in general. Um, hopefully put a damper on that uh, drought. All right, folks, have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Got a busy day. Take care.